welcome to the second of our programs coming from Uri and Mourne District Council. My name is Hilary Halliday and last week I was chatting to Newry Town councillors and this week I'm delighted to have in the studio um, councillors from the Fuse areas. So councillors, if you'd just like to introduce yourselves and I'll start with the lady. Hi, I'm Roisin Mulgrew, councillor for the Fuse. John Feehan, SDLP councillor for the Fuse. Uh, Dara Hughes, Sinn Féin councillor for the Fuse. And the Buffett Junior councillor for the Fuse. Well, thank you councillors and as I say, you're all very, very welcome. Uh, we're going to be discussing a few things pertaining to the, the Fuse areas and I think we'll start with uh, what I think is one of the most valuable assets we have in the Fuse and I'm referring of course to Camla Lake, uh, which uh, is being more and more used for recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. But however, I believe that uh, the Reservoir Act has dictated that every waterway in Northern Ireland has to have a structural engineer's report on the safety. And I'm also told that there's a lot of work needed to be done to uh, Camla Lake, particularly the strengthening of the banks. And I think uh, somewhat in the region of 2.5 million mm -hmm. is, is the cost of that, which I'm sure you'll agree is a, is a staggering amount. Um, but of course, if this isn't on, uh, the future of Camla Lake is in jeopardy. So uh, do you think the council can successfully uh, acquire the funding to do this from the various departments? And if this is not done, then what do you think is going to happen to Camden Lake? Uh, what's your views on that? And uh, I'll start with the Mayor. <coughs> okay, Gloria, Hilary, thank you very much. Um, well, Camden Lake, as you said, is, is one of our most valuable assets. It's, it's arguably the jewel in the crown of the area, and not just in the Fuse, but in the district. And as you said, it's becoming increasingly popular with uh, all forms of sport and recreation, and it is a magnificent site. Now, the structural report we heard initially, I think in January, February, about how um, how much work was required to make the, the lake of a standard that we would deem acceptable. And the figure 2.5 million was, um, was given to us as, as the minimum of, of what work needed to be uh, done. Uh, luckily, we've received a commitment from NI Water uh, to fund half of that. And we are in the process of um, talking to several departments in the Northern Executive here. Uh, seeking additional funding to top up. Now, see, one of the difficulties is that, that the lake itself doesn't fall under the remit of any one government department. It's arguably under DECAL, DSD, DRD, whatever, and um, the Department of the Environment as well. So we have written to several ministers uh, asking them to consider additional funding for the project. We've heard back from some, some have been negative, some have said that they're willing to look at it, but maybe not this financial year. But with the commitment from NI Water and with the new council structures, the district will have to make a commitment but hopefully we'll be able to top that up with, with a contribution from another government department. So we've half the money banked uh, from NI Water and we got a <coughs> commitment from the minister who visited the council chambers last month that even if it goes over the 2.5 million that NI Water will, will fund half. So if it's three, they'll, they'll put up 1.5 as, as opposed to 1.25. So whilst you know, on the surface the 2.5 million looks huge, we have got support from government agencies. We will have to make a contribution, but I think you'll find consensus around here that nobody is willing to see uh, Campbell Lake descend into, uh, into a standard of disuse or, or anything like that. We have a strong commitment from the council and from all parties to maintain it and, if anything, develop it uh, to, to reach its yeah. capacity. Mm -hmm. And is there a timeline on this? Uh, how soon do we need to be I doing think, this? I, I think the situation at the minute is, uh, as we stand, NI Water have a vested interest in Camla Lake because it was being used as a reservoir. Now, they perceive that in the future they won't be using it as a reservoir, so at the minute they're prepared to make the commitment to that spend. So we want this work to start as quickly as possible. The big problem with Camla Lake when it comes to securing other money, of course, is the fact that the ownership has never been really uh, sorted out regarding the lake. Sorry, yeah. And, you know, considering that ourselves as councillors and ratepayers are going to have to put a lot of money into it, which <coughs> is, as Dara said, no one begrudges, um, it is vitally important to Camden. This is a, a health and safety issue, so there's simply no choice. But, I mean, for turning it into a major tourist attraction, also creating employment in the area, uh, people might not realise that also the levels of water in Newry Canal are dictated by Camla Lake. So it's not just an issue that affects South Armagh. It would have a knock-on effect, you know, right down as far as the canal and the whole area that the canal covers. So uh, from the point of view for the commitment with NIW, 
we need to be moving very quickly and the initial cost is about 250,000 for the immediate works. Now we have committed that we will get that 125,000 <coughs> to match fund what NIW are prepared to put in to get the, the necessary safety work started as soon as possible. Well, there is going to be a cost to the ratepayers. Well, obviously, there, there is. Yeah, a, a, as uh, others have said, NA Water have uh, committed 1.25 million, I think, to the uh, to the project, and uh, we have spoken with the minister, as the mayor has rightly said, uh, and asking him to uh, speak to his colleagues and the executive within tourism and within uh, recreation, um, th those who are responsible for that, because uh, uh, Cameron uh, has uh, become a fantastic recreation facility Absolutely. and it's used now by uh, uh, people from all over Ireland in relation to the, uh, the, the triathlon which is the, one of the biggest uh, events in, 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 in Ireland and uh, some as the mayor said some of the, uh, the ministers have come back and said that they're not willing to to uh, fund it uh, to, to inject any money into it but again it goes back to uh, what the executive have, have done uh, within the Reservoir Act, as you spoke about there at the beginning, they have um, given a lot of responsibility over to councils. They've, they, they've given planning now to council, and they've given the, this Reservoir Act over to councils now. The councils have now got to find the money for planning, have to find the money to um, safeguard the, the public in relation to reservoirs and ponds and whatever. And there are quite a few within the Newry Moorn area, and now even more now within. Our new, uh, our new super council area in, from from down, and uh, those are all going to have to be looked at. And God knows what's down the line in relation to safety of our of our uh, of our lakes and ponds. So it's something that that the executive have put on to councils with no funding given to them uh, to, 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 to 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 meet it's these these uh, mm -hmm. safety aspects. Yeah. So. So, Councillor Moffat, do you think it would be uh, good value to the ratepayers yes. to have this money? This <coughs> Thank you, Heather. It certainly would be good value for the area. Camden Lake has been, over a number of years, been a great facility up there uh, and has become a greater facility in the last number of years where there's a great cross-community aspect to it now. There's things going on up at Camden Lake. I'm told now that there's well mixed across the community and for that alone should be encouraged and uh, we should be holding departments uh, that are responsible for finance to come up with the, 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 the dough and, and give us a hand to get it done. Uh, it's very, very important that, that we f sort out the ownership of the lake mm -hmm. and that'll be a, certainly a big plus. Uh, and I certainly, along with my party, would be supporting uh, the development of Camden Lake for all the people of the, the part of the area and all the people of Gary and Moore and our new council area right across the board because it is a great facility, as I say, and the rest of the speakers really have, have uh, confirmed what we're all thinking about, that we must work we together must work. and get that developed. And a, uh, it's going to take money to do it, and that's the bottom line. And uh, we must be scraping at the doors of the, these departments who are holding the key to the front and, and get it and get it done. Well, th th um, events that are in the pipeline, like the Crooked Lake, the triathlon for next year, will that be in jeopardy if this work isn't carried out soon, or is there a... Well, a, a from, from a safety point of view, yeah. the level of the lake had to be dropped by a metre and a half. Now, that was the case this year, and the triathlon was able to, be, to go well. ahead. And at this stage, we are being told that th there will be events as planned will be allowed to go ahead. The big problem is maintaining that level of the water level. That's why the, the level of water in the lake has dropped. That has to be uh, continued on throughout the winter. During the summer months, obviously, it has been no problem because we haven't had any rain. <laughs> but lots of people, you know, have sort of questioned why the lake is so low. Yeah. That's the reason. Uh, I think we put in a, a little bit of an extra slipway to facilitate the swimmers to get in and out of the lake mm -hmm. during the triathlon this year. And certainly it would not be the intention of Newry and Moran Council at this stage to stop any events that would be due to take place on the lake. Well, initially when we were told about the structural security of the, the wall, uh, we were told quite categorically that a 1.5 metre drop wouldn't hinder any sports or recreation activity on the lake. Now that wasn't the case because the, the Cricket Lake Triathlon, as Roisin said, had to put in a temporary slipway at considerable cost and time to themselves. What the impasse is doing, whilst we are sitting here and the government departments are sitting here before we get a concrete answer, it's stunting the development of the lake because there are plans and there are groups there who are doing excellent work 
on a daily basis around the lake that have plans for development to make it the sort of tourist attraction, as John was saying, that it should be. Absolutely. And, and whilst this question mark hangs over it, whether it be about the ownership, whether it be about the banks, it results in a stagnation and nothing being done. Mm -hmm. So the sooner this is done, we can complement those groups and support them going forward. Yeah. And what sort of things would you like to see on the, on the la uh, happening on the lake, well, apart there, from the triathlon and stuff? Well, there are lots of <coughs> things happening on the lake. Uh, just, uh, there's actually a continuous programme, basically. On the, uh, there's rowing takes place on it, uh, skiing, and it's, and, uh, and it's managed now by... Uh, the, the group that uh, within the uh, Cameron Lake Recreation mm -hmm. Committee, and uh, you can't now. Which at one time you could have just gone onto the lake, and uh, and took your ski onto it, took your uh, your boat onto it, took your managed, fish properly. wherever you wanted to. But it's now managed properly, and I think rightly so. Mm -hmm. Which leaves uh, there are areas now for fishing, and there are areas where you can take your boat, and there are areas where uh, where you can swim, and uh, so that, that that's being properly managed. But uh, if, if, if they continue with the lake dropped, uh, those, those all kind of things are all in jeopardy. We had the, the Guinness World That's Record right. uh, a few yeah, years ago as well that took place, which was a fantastic event. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are continued, there are, there are always uh, events happening. taking place mm -hmm. within the, uh, on Camera Lake. Well, do you think the council's doing enough to promote it, or should no. it be promoted as the whole Ring of Gullion well, events? Well, it's, it's one of our responsibilities, as tourism, and, uh -huh. and uh, it's an, it's we as a council have been working at it for a number of years and, and, and I can see a, a big improvement in the last two, three, four years here where a group about Canada has got up and they're actually doing something about it. We have been sitting talking about it, but there was never any action. Yes. <laughs> We're all talking about what should be done and what needs to be done, but it never was done. But this group seems to be now uh, really to the fore and if they lose interest in this whole thing, well then the whole thing will fall flat on its face again and we're we'll back to square one where we were before. So the council so should be supporting them the really? The council in should be uh, certainly in there doing all they can. I think though in fairness, Andy, the big thing is, is the legal ownership of the lake. Correct and right. And, and yeah. you know, anywhere you go for funding, you need to have proof of, of leases and, and yeah. deeds and what have you. And until that is a grey area, I don't think we're going to be able to, we have to got to get that sorted out. But I mean, the long term plan for South Armagh would be that we get real tourism into South Armagh, not people that are going to come for three or four hours to the likes of Slave Gullion Courtyard, which is a fantastic facility and the only facility in the north of Ireland, the only forest facility that has green flag, which is a fantastic um, you know, a, a thing to and have. It does attract area. people. It attracts from people right across. We want people to be coming in here <coughs> and stay for a few days. Right. So we need to be developing the lake. And I know the lake there at the minute is fantastic for water sports. I would love to see us putting a walkway the whole way around the lake. What that about even be. a track for ponies? There's lots of, of people now, you know, would be into pony tracking, walking, right. you know, put the, 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 um, allow fishermen to access, access the entire lake. You know, there are lots of things other than, than the actual water sports, like jogging, That's walking, right. pony tracking. You know, so we need to be looking at this as a, in a much more wider. comprehensive, wider way, so that people come and they do spend money and they do That's stay. Right. And the scenery is just well, beautiful fabulous. around there. That, that, fabulous. Is, yeah, that is something that we have been looking at over the last number of years. But a big, the big problem with it is ownership. There are uh, people who own uh, land that goes right down into, into the lake par yeah. practically and will not allow people to mm. trespass yes. on that land. Yes. And there have been talks and negotiations going on with various landowners over the last number of years to try and establish some kind of a walkway, some kind of a, a tourist attraction where you can come right around the lake. But again, go back to the, uh, to the ownership issue. That's something that has been a big issue for the last number of years. Ever since I, I came out of council, before I came out of council, and uh, as, as we all know, the council have been paying uh, like a rent to the, who, the person, I don't want to mention their names, but that oh. we, we know owns, or uh, supposedly owns Camera Lake. But once they, they, this um, safety issue came in to being, they didn't want to know. They, 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 they said, no, we don't own it, no. <laughs> so, uh, because that, that meant that they were going to have to have yes. the, the, the job of uh, s securing the uh, safety aspect of it. So that's now all up in the air as to who the ownership is, even though we've been paying uh, to rent to those particular people right. over the last and 20 years. Or maybe. On the advice of our sister, I have to say, because there's been a lot of uh, criticism of uh, council for paying rent, but 
the advice we got from our solicitor when the meetings with them is that we continue to pay the rent. The big, the big uh, success is that when you look at the success that the Gullion has been, mm -hmm. it should encourage the council to move forward and get this developed. Many, many of us were doubtful about Steve Gullion, about the uh, money that was going to be spent there. But it has, to be, it has been a very successful development and mm -hmm. it's drawn right. in hundreds of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. My own family was up at it and they tell me they have to queue up to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> and that's a great sign mm -hmm. for the, even the person who owns the, the coffee mm -hmm. shop. Yeah. And uh, those people are only a short distance away from Camelie. And it'd be nice. So there could be a whole uh, trail right around all come right in right right together. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Rosine says, it doesn't only, it's for the local people, it's for those who have bed and breakfasts and people coming in to stay with us, what we want to encourage in. And come in to best we can buy an odd paper too. <laughs> <laughs> Always gets the plug in, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 I don't want to mention which shop this is about. No, no. <laughs> I don't know where any of them do this art shop. Well, President, <laughs> I think we're all in agreement that yeah. this is work that, that has to go ahead and the Council mm -hmm. is 100% behind it mm -hmm. and that we'll be looking at that in, in the future and, yeah. and supporting yeah. uh, all of the people out in Canada who are doing such a marvellous mm -hmm. job with the lake. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll move on now to uh, football, Councillor <laughs> Fagan, that's one of your passions. We're talking about <coughs> the Aurier Park changing facilities. Um, I believe the Council has agreed to the provision of £110,000 uh, for changing facilities at yeah, Aurier Park. Yeah. Um, do you accept that the provision of these changing facilities is, is essential in light of the new legislation on child protection issues? Uh, ab absolutely, and uh, as a former ch chairman of the Caribbean League, and uh, I get a lot of criticism uh, from uh, members of the Caribbean League whenever they go to play games in, uh, in mid Ulster or even further afield, uh, down in uh, Lurgan, Portadown, um, uh, what have you, they, there's, there's first class facilities provided by the council at all these pitches that, that we're going to play on uh, and they, they, when they come back to Newry and the facilities that are provided by the council are practically nil and uh, I've been getting in the the neck from uh, members of the Carmel League, guys who've, who've uh, participated in the league for, for many, many years. And I think this one, uh, I think the only, the only uh, facility that we, we have available for changing at, at the pitch is, I think, Dara Lecky. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 there's new legislation being brought in now by the IFA in relation to uh, changing facilities. If you want to participate in the Junior Cup, which is a big competition that all the local clubs take part in, and in the middle of the shield, you now have to have facilities on your pitch where the 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 coming the team is you're playing against have have, uh, have somewhere to change, and the referee has somewhere to change. And if you know if you haven't got those facilities, you can no longer participate in the junior cup. Right. Uh, Adoria Park, uh, which is probably one of the best grounds uh, uh, that uh, within the, the council area, it's uh, closed off. It has the policy of fencing around it and gates, which which. Uh, Keeps the general public and dogs and quads mm -hmm. and whatever you have. Mm -hmm. it. uh, it's, as I say, one of our best pitches. And, but we have teams coming from Kilkeel and other areas, and they're changing in their the cars and they're changing the at the side of cars mm -hmm. and uh, in, in the middle of a, what is a fairly large development. And uh, there are complaints from residents, and I think this maybe the, these facilities that they we're hoping to provide at Oria Park will be. Uh, the beginning, maybe, of, uh, of the council providing uh, s facilities in that respect uh, at all other areas, uh, and uh, maybe this is maybe the start, and hopefully, a, can, a program can be rolled out over the next number of years where facilities can be provided at the various venues uh, that, that uh, people can partake of. And uh, the, I think the uh, the soccer fraternity has kind of been let down to a certain extent over the l long number of years. Uh, the Carmel League is going 40 odd years now, yes. and, uh, and we still haven't got facilities still provided at, at the football pitches. Well, of course, this is going to cost the ratepayers again. Do you think it's money well spent? Yes, uh, I, certainly, I certainly do think it's money well spent because uh, Aria Park and Canby, and they, they cater for a lot of our young people there. Although one is not interested in sport at all, uh, I certainly was very much supporting my council colleague there at the rates uh, debate that these changes in facilities would be there. Now, there is a lot of complaints from residents in, in, in round in round the Aria Park area about children standing and changing and out on the street and 
all sorts of things happening and um, uh, we, we ha managed to get uh, the two schemes through in the rates but there's only one going to be done. We, we Karen Bain is certainly not going to be done now at this moment of time but uh, it will come a time the money will be available to do Karen Bain and I think it will be money well spent and I certainly do but I know that the young councillors coming behind as you know I'm retiring now in a few months and I certainly do know the young councillors coming in behind will take the Assist fight on, on and demand that we have change in facilities for Karen Bain and other places. Okay. Councillor Mulgrew, I don't know whether you're interested in soccer or changing no, facilities but do you think it's essential that we say. do this? Oh, we do and, and in fairness now my son-in-law is a fantastic footballer so you know I appreciate that although I've only gone to watch him once because <laughs> I say it's not my idea of a great day and <laughs> um, uh, you know you do go to these football grounds and you see young men changing in the backs of cars and, and one thing and another and it's really not acceptable you know so I know that um, party colleagues of ours that stepped down before the last election were very supportive with Andy and John mm -hmm. regarding the provision of this facility and certainly you know as new young councillors, I love calling myself a young councillor, <laughs> <laughs> we would certainly also support that you know I mean it would be make a huge difference to Aurier Park and we have no problem with supporting that and you know the rates even though you might think you know well we, we have to look at what is good for an overall community. We can't be very parochial when it comes to the the use of rates. The rates are there to provide services for everyone, you know, and uh, yes, certainly we would agree with the, the spending of that money. Good. And Mayor, what, what's your views on it? Well, actually, coming at it from the perspective of Mayor, one thing I've noticed in the last few months is that the Council has a commitment to developing minority sports, and soccer is a minority sport in the district. And I believe that these changing rooms and changing facilities will go some way to the development of the sport overall. Uh, they are needed in Oyer Park, as John and Andy and, and Roshan have said. It, the days of uh, children and, and adults getting changed in the back of a car yes, to go and play football are, are over, you know, and, and rightly so. But um, I think the council needs to look at this in the round. We need to look at facilities for development of sport. I mean, boxing is incredibly popular in the district. We need to support the development of that, gymnastics, whatever. I mean, there's a wide range of sports that are growing that have the numbers to merit development. And hopefully this uh, development at Oriar Park uh, will, will set a precedent for the council support in minority sports in the future. All right, good. Well, will these um, facilities incorporate showers and stuff like that, or is it just... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, the, the, the showers and changing rooms oh, uh, for good. for both the home and away team, and changing facilities for the uh, for the referee, and uh, for the disabled as well. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's it's quite a quite a large project. Well, that'll yeah. probably encourage more people to take up the sport. You know, when there's the proper facilities mm. there to uh, to accommodate them. Yeah. Absolutely. You would agree with that, uh, being mar having been married to one of the best footballers <laughs> in the area. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Uh, right, we'll move on then to um, the new kickabout area at Clagarvan. Um, can you give us your views on um, the delay by the Department of Social uh, Development on the funding request for this? And uh, do you think you know that uh, this project should go ahead? And what will be the ramifications from the community if it doesn't? Well, I think, I mean, I was talking to one of our officers about that in the last couple of days, and um, I mean, everybody's very disappointed that the money hasn't been forthcoming because, you know, everybody was in a situation that they were ready to go. The council had committed the money, the money to it. Um, now, we are still hoping that perhaps in the next month there will be some movement on the release of money. Um, basically, all the indications were that the money was going what, to be what is, what is the delay? Well, Why I are think there not? have been overspends in other projects. <laughs> and <laughs> basically, they've basically ran out of money. Now, as I say, um, as it stands, we as a council have, uh, you know, hung on to that our commitment of 110,000 you know and I know our officers are working furiously <coughs> to try and, and push the department to release the money and also I mean departments sometimes are but you know you wonder how they work because you know there's a lot of deadlines um, involved w with monies and, and grants and what have you and at this stage we need that money so the work can be carried out and 
we the people can use what the, the council has set aside for them. So they would be extremely disappointed and we would be extremely disappointed if that project didn't go ahead. And it's not for the want of, of trying. And in fairness to our officers, they are working very, very hard to, to try it, and get, get this money. Mm -hmm. I guess one thing we need to note as well, that we need to commend the group that, that have put in the application in the community for uh, supporting it. There's a great area of community development in the area now through the gardens and Clock Urban Park and everything else. But it is immensely frustrating and it's not the first time that we've seen uh, uh, projects or, or um, funding applications be successful and then nothing materialise after it. I mean, we had the debacle last year with uh, Camlet Community Cent uh, Centre, which got through SEUPB funding, was granted and successful, and then fell through at the last minute. And that sense of frustration is palpable in the area, and that's the last thing that we want to happen uh, with this project, because, as Roisin has rightly said, uh, several organisations and groups have already committed to this, and, and it has ticked all the boxes. It's a green light, it's ready to go. It's just, it's just getting the, the funding drawn down from the department. Well, Councillor Moffat, do you hope that it, that it comes to fruition before your term of office uh, is I up? I certainly would like to say it done. It's one that we had uh, lobbied for for a number of years and uh, it certainly would do two things. It would create something for the young people there to kick about area and to play a play area and would clean up the whole area. It, it's, it's got very shabby and things that got in around the backs of the house, the rocks and that. And uh, it would certainly, and I would be supporting those certainly who are keeping on lobbying about it to keep to make sure it's there before the end of March. But I am not sure whether that'll be there or not. But nevertheless, I will be working along with all my other colleagues here in the Fuse to make to, to deliver that if, if we can at all. As but I would be I it? would be concerned of course about if money's not coming of where they'll be looking to spend the other hundred the hundred and ten thousand <laughs> that is available. <laughs> and, got a list. and we certainly will be keeping a very sharp yeah. eye on that. Because I do know that my colleagues would have priorities as well, I'm mm -hmm. sure, and, and I know that I have a priority as well for if it's not being spent there, it'll be spent somewhere else. Councillor Ficken, do you think it's going to go ahead before the end of March? Well, I would hope so, and uh, it, it is very, very frustrating, I have to say. It was Andy and myself and, and former councillor, councillor McGinn, Pat McGinn, had met with the residents in Clockerven, down in the Clockerven and the gardens area, and uh, we actually agreed an area where the, the this mother, uh, mother use games area uh, facility could be provided, and we even had the personnel from DSD uh, and showed it her and saw it and saw it that it would be a could be a fantastic facility in this particular area, which is an area of maybe about 100 and 100 not 150 houses maybe and yeah, for a lot of young families, yeah. and there's not a swing in the area, and um, but it's it's become very very frustrating because since. We actually put aside the £110,000 uh, in January, February at our rates and we've been continually hearing from DSD that a letter of offer is imminent mm -hmm. and I've been hearing that now for the past six months and only last month I was told that we were going to, uh, we will be receiving the very certain in uh, this month but as yet we still haven't had that letter of offer. <coughs> if we get a letter of offer it won't go ahead and there's a um, the facility itself, uh, that Mugger, Mugger uh, pitch area, it's a polymeric surface, that's, and that polymeric surface cannot be laid during the winter period. Oh, right. so, so it has, has to, to uh, and Jane. it has to. Uh, the, the the letter of offer has to come now fairly quickly, so that we can start to work on it and get out to tender on it and get the the work work started. Because if it goes on into the winter, we won't be able to we won't be able to go ahead with it and, and take up the letter of offer because mm -hmm. it, it cannot provide. It can't provide it in yeah. the winter. Well, councillors, uh, thank you very much. A lot going on in the fuse, a lot of money going to be spent, hopefully over the hopefully. next couple of years. Yeah. And um, hopefully all of those projects will go ahead, uh, even without Councillor Feehan and Councillor Moffat, who will be sailing off into retirement. Yeah. It's OK, Hilary, yeah. we still have our phone numbers there. <laughs> 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 I have for those things <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in and discussing those projects. Well, Councillor thank Moffat you. can very well afford to sail here and there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't, John and I, I can't be sail anywhere. paddling in more may, than a pint maybe in the water. My <laughs> sailing will be restricted to I'm sure you, you will be missed if it's only for the banter. <laughs> well, viewers, well, thank you. I've enjoyed the old crack with uh, the council over a number of years. Good. I'm a bit of a rascal in that chamber, of course, you know. <laughs> don't need to tell you that. <laughs>
I'm well done to you, Henry, too, for trying today's uh, get together. Oh, thank yep. you very much. Yep. And I think, Henry, right. you've been in the wrong job now. You've, you've, <laughs> done, a, you've done a very good really job there. A complete new um, yeah. career, career for me. <laughs> anyway, viewers, thank you very much for tuning in to us. Uh, next week, I'll be uh, chatting to councillors from the Mourns areas and see what's happening down there. So thank you all very much. Mm -hmm.